This is Sarah Wilkinson from the University of Guelph Humber and Humber College. And in this video, I will be going through the specific events of the cardiac cycle. You'll likely want to watch part one, which I go over what pressure is. I talk about heart valves, cordae tendineae, and papillary muscles. I discuss how a difference in pressure governs valve opening, closing, and the flow of blood. In this part, I'm going to go through the detailed events within the cardiac cycle. But before we start, I'm going to go over a little bit of terminology. Again, the cardiac cycle are the mechanical events that move blood through the heart and out to the body. Now I'm going to go through a couple key terms that usually throw students off because they sound so foreign. ISO means same. Volumetric refers to volume, that is, the volume of blood. And when we discuss contraction or relaxation, it always refers to the ventricle when we're talking about the cardiac cycle. That is, unless it says atrial contraction. Okay, then it's obviously referring to the atria. Remember that contraction is also referred to as systole or systole, depending on what your accent is. Note that I say systole as I've got a Canadian accent, but some of you who are from the US may say systole. And relaxation is diastole, or you might refer to it as diastole. It's like tomato, tomato, about, about. So let's put it all together. One of the phases we're gonna start with is called isovolumetric relaxation. So let's look at what that means. So when we're saying isovolumetric relaxation, we are referring to the same volume of blood contained in the ventricle as it relaxes. So the ventricle is relaxing and the volume of blood is not changing within it. Let's start there. Let's look at the first phase. You can start anywhere, but I like to start at isovolumetric relaxation. That is, the blood in the ventricle is not changing. So we're not adding blood into the ventricle because the atrial ventricular valves are closed. This phase starts just as the ventricle has relaxed, so it's in diastole, and all valves are closed. I'm going to express the atrial ventricular valves being closed or open, and the semilunar valves being closed or open up at the top. And you'll see this changes as we go through the different phases. Blood is gonna to start to accumulate. It's coming in through the pulmonary veins and is accumulating in the atrium. Remember, if we add more blood to a given volume, blood pressure increases. That increase in pressure in the atria compared to the ventricle opens the atrial ventricular valves. Blood will now move from the atrium to the ventricle passively. So let's review this phase I've just covered in detail. This phase is referred to as passive filling. Sometimes people say passive ventricular filling or they might just say passive filling. Remember, if a chamber is not referred to, it's always the ventricle. So in this phase, atrial pressure is greater than ventricular pressure because the blood is returning to the atrium. This will cause the AV valves to open up and blood will flow passively through the atria into the ventricles. This phase is responsible for about 80% of ventricular filling. So 80% of blood will just passively flow from the pulmonary veins through the atrium into the ventricles. Blood continues to come in from the pulmonary veins and the second phase of ventricular filling will occur. We call this phase atrial contraction, also referred to as atrial systole. This decreasing of the chamber size increases the pressure, pushing the remainder of the blood into the ventricles, and it completes ventricular filling. So about 20% of blood in the ventricles comes from the atria contracting. As we enter the next phase, the atria will relax, they'll be in diastole, and the ventricle will begin to contract. This will push blood up against the atrial ventricular valve cusps, closing them. As the ventricle continues to contract with all of the valves closed, that is the atrial ventricular valves and the semilunar valves, we enter the next phase called isovolumetric contraction. That is, the blood volume in the ventricle remains the same 
as pressure rises due to the ventricles contracting. So the ventricles will continue to contract, increasing the pressure in the ventricles, but no blood is leaving the heart. Therefore, we call it isovolumetric. Finally, the pressure rises so high compared to the pressure in the aorta, and I didn't draw the blood in there, but the pressure in the aorta is about 80 millimeters of mercury. The pressure needs to get become greater than 80 millimeters of mercury for the semilunar valves to open up. Left ventricular pressure becomes greater than the aortic pressure. If we're talking about the left side of the heart, remember on the right side of the heart is the right ventricular pressure that has to become greater than the pulmonary trunk, which, which if you remember, is the large artery leaving on the right-hand side heading to the lungs. So our pressure is greater in the ventricle than compared to the aorta. This will cause the semilunar valves to open up. Remember, our AV valves stay closed because of those chordae tendinia and the papillary muscles, which I didn't draw here. That's too much for me. And we call this phase ventricular ejection. The blood is being ejected from the ventricle to the large arteries. There the blood goes out through the aorta and it leaves the heart. So on the left side of the heart, it's going out through the aorta and on the right to the pulmonary trunk. As the ventricles relax diastole, the pressure in the ventricles drops while the pressure in the aorta is higher than that in the ventricles. So again, blood from, flows from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure back towards the heart. The blood gets caught in the cusps of the semilunar valves and they shut. We are now back to the beginning. We call this phase isovolumetric relaxation. This is the phase we started with. That is, the ventricles are relaxed and there's the same volume of blood in the ventricle because the cusps are closed. We are now ready to start again going through the phases. So let's do a quick review of what we've just covered. The cardiac cycle are the mechanical events that move blood through the heart and out to the body. Let's start at the two phases of ventricular filling. The first phase is passive. Blood will flow through open atrial ventricular valves passively because of gravity. The second phase involves atrial contraction, which increases the pressure in the atria to push blood into the ventricles. The next phase is isovolumetric contraction, where the ventricles contract, pushing the atrial ventricular valves closed, but the pressure is not so great that the semilunar valves are open yet. So the volume in the heart stays the same, isovolumetric contraction. The next phase involves opening the semilunar valves so that blood leaves the heart, and we call that ventricular ejection. And finally, as blood passively flows back to the relaxed ventricles, the semilunar valves shut so that the volume in the ventricles does not change, and we call that isovolumetric relaxation. I hope you found these two videos helpful in understanding the cardiac cycle. I want to point out I didn't show the typical textbook chart of pressures in all of these parts because I find it a little confusing to students. If that graph makes sense to you, fantastic, but don't be thrown off by it. If you understand that blood flows from areas of high pressure to low pressure, the two main things that are going to affect pressure are the amount of blood. So as we add more blood, there's more pressure. And the second being the size of the chamber. So as we decrease the size of the chamber, pressure will go up. You'll be right set in understanding the cardiac cycle.